In a world where power springs from the barrel of a gun, the Emirates shows it can also be found at the bottom of an oil well. Located halfway between the world's biggest economies and home to substantial reserves of hydrocarbons and outlandish wealth, the United Arab Emirates employs a secular governance model and, unlike many of its neighbors, is relatively tolerant of different faiths. Right from the time of the discovery of oil, the Emirathis zealously pursued plans for diversification. Today, the country has slashed hydrocarbon reliance to just 30% of its GDP. New industries like real estate, tourism, logistics and transportation have emerged. Year in and out, the UAE has attracted record levels of foreign direct investment. Now, its leadership craves to wield power disproportionate to its size. The state has steadily transformed from the Manhattan of the Middle East to the region's little Sparta, acquiring highly advanced weapons and going commando across the periphery. Abu Dhabi's recent entry into BRICS is a testament to that ambitious policy. However, you don't get to the big league without making a few enemies. Even then, you have to learn to make the right enemies. The UAE is small, sterile and vulnerable. Future historians may well compare the Emirates to Sparta, that is, if it makes it past this decade first. Special thanks to Cook Unity for sponsoring this video. Cook Unity is the first platform to introduce chef to consumer meals. It partners with culinary innovators and award-winning chefs from across the United States to bring you an at-home dining experience you can't find anywhere else. Its meals use fresh seasonal produce and are prepared by over 50 chefs from some of the best restaurants across America. The meals are delivered fully cooked, simply heat and eat. Placing an order is easy. You choose a subscription plan, which you can cancel anytime, and then select from hundreds of meals each week. There are over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free. Now, I'm just a tad jealous that I don't live in a region where I can take advantage of this myself. However, our editor has rated it very highly, particularly the shrimp and chorizo paella by chef Jose Garces from New York. So, if you want to enjoy restaurant cooked meals for a fraction of the price, check out Cook Unity. Go to cookunity.com slash caspian50 or click the link in the description and use my code caspian50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. At the crossroads of civilization, nestled into the southeast of the Arabian Peninsula, lies the United Arab Emirates. It is a flat, dry country with a barren coastal plain that gradually transitions into rolling dunes, forming the Rub al Khali Desert. Surviving in this harsh landscape can test strength as surely as armed conflict. Yet, it is an environment in which the Emirathis thrive. The UAE's history is a narrative of evolution. Following the departure of the British in the 20th century, the local leaders, spearheaded by the Al Nahyan family, forged a union of the royal families. This marked the birth of a new nation poised to navigate the complexities of regional politics and global economics. The discovery of oil brought unprecedented wealth catapulting the Emirates onto the world stage as a major player in the energy sector. At the top of the pecking order stands President Mohammed bin Zayed, popularly known as MBZ. As president, he molds national policy while each of the country's seven royal families maintains political authority over their respective territories. The presidency operates akin to an elective monarchy where the royal families cast their votes and handpick the president. However, over the years, there's been a unanimous understanding that the presidency should remain within the Al Nehyan family. This tradition traces back to the family's patriarch, who spearheaded unification following the British exit. 
in a region often marred by turbulence, the Emirates remains a beacon of stability. This resilience gained heightened importance in 2022 with MBZ's rise to the presidency. Recognizing stability as the UAE's bedrock, MBZ actively works to prevent family disputes from destabilizing the state. He rules in collaboration with his five full brothers, who together have unanimously chosen MBZ's son as the next successor. This strategy eliminates any internal family challenges to his authority and ensures a smooth transition of power. Yet, it is not people but climate that stands as the UAE's most formidable adversary. Less than 1% of its territory is arable, and the country lacks even a single permanent freshwater lake or river. Historically, these sterile environmental conditions restricted large-scale human habitation, and, for most states, geography as such would spell a sentence to poverty. The Emirathis, however, have found ways around it. Of course, it helps that, just outside its peninsular coastline, rests a treasure trove of oil and gas reserves. You see, the UAE is a major fossil fuel producer, possessing 6% of the world's oil reserves and ranking 7th in proven natural gas reserves. Crude oil, in particular, is the country's primary source of income and still makes up a whopping 30% of its GDP. However, while oil built the Emirati fortune, it is ultimately a finite resource. This is a reality the government recognized since the beginning. As such, Emirati national policy prudently focuses on reducing the country's reliance on hydrocarbon revenues, investing billions into sovereign wealth funds and industries that range from tourism to banking. Even so, when it comes to diversification, the UAE's location is a game-changer. Nestled along the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea, its extensive coastline opens doors to vital maritime trade routes. This prime position has catapulted the country into a maritime powerhouse, with Jebel Ali emerging as one of the world's busiest container ports. Keen to maximize every opportunity, the UAE has also established itself as a premier air travel hub. Dubai, in particular, has soared to new heights. It hosts the world's busiest airport for international travel. Meanwhile, Emirates Airlines has grown into one of the globe's largest carriers. This blend of maritime and aerial connectivity, complemented by business-friendly policies like low taxes and efficient bureaucracy, transformed the UAE into a financial epicenter, dubbed the Manhattan of the Middle East. Still, to build an empire, one must stand on the shoulders of its labor force. But, for such an expansive diversification project, the UAE's citizen population is just too small. As a remedy, the Emirathis have resorted to importing. The country entices workers from South and Southeast Asia with competitive salaries that they can use to support their families back home. Between 2003 and the mid-2010s, the expatriate workforce surged by a staggering 325%. Though seemingly an ingenious solution to its demographic shortcoming, work does not come with citizenship. As of 2024, Emirati citizens account for only a fraction of the total population. Of its 9.3 million inhabitants, a little over 1.1 million can call themselves Emirati citizens. Foreign laborers make up the rest. This might be a problem going into the future, and it positions the UAE more as a state than a nation. Ergo, like the Venetian Empire, the Emiratis have no strategic depth and no room for error. Nonetheless, after a lengthy economic diversification process, the Emirates now reaps the benefits. The economy as a whole grew by 3.7% in the first half of the year compared to the same period in 2022. Excluding oil-related industries, growth stands at an even more impressive 5.9%.
These figures signify that Abu Dhabi's resilient economy is poised to thrive in a future without fossil fuels. In the pursuit of prosperity, it is essential to recognize that foreign policy is just as crucial as domestic. The UAE's anything-goes approach is anchored by a pragmatic philosophy, prioritizing stability and economic growth irrespective of political affiliations or beliefs. This anything-goes policy has turned the Emirates into a refuge for the shunned and isolated. For instance, by not sanctioning Russia, Abu Dhabi boosted its bilateral trade with Moscow and placed itself as a mediator for prisoner swaps. It's worth noting at this point that while the UAE's location is strategic, it is a double-edged sword. Situated in one of the world's most volatile regions, the UAE is constantly exposed to conflict. Yet, the Anything Goes policy guided Abu Dhabi through these dangerous waters. Acting quietly and carefully, the Emirati leadership cooperated with both Saudi Arabia and Iran while maintaining neutrality in regional conflicts. The UAE also enjoys a strategic alliance with its only two neighbors, Saudi Arabia and Oman. Moreover, together with Bahrain, Kuwait and Qatar, they make up the Gulf Cooperation Council, or GCC. By fostering economic integration and security cooperation between members, the Emirathis have helped stabilize their immediate neighborhood. Taken together, the UAE's one-of-a-kind approach to statecraft grants the federal government considerable flexibility in decision-making. Abu Dhabi's small citizen pool means it can implement policies without catering to a large, divided populace. And, since the federal government has nominal responsibilities, it can therefore focus entirely on geopolitics without prejudice. This then sets the UAE apart and allows for policymaking that might be untenable for countries with more outstanding domestic obligations. However, in recent years, Abu Dhabi has been chasing the horizon. The Emirati leadership has shifted from a cautious to an assertive policy. No longer content with playing it safe, the UAE looks to establish itself as the premier economic and diplomatic power in the Middle East. The initial stage in Abu Dhabi's plan is to become a renewables pioneer investing in nuclear and solar projects, but also carbon capture technologies to prolong the life of its oil industry. Hosting the COP28 Climate Summit in 2023 revealed this objective to the world. In part, hosting the summit was a strategic move to transform the country's image from a petrostate to one reflecting its cities, sleek, modern and clean. To push its economic influence even further, Abu Dhabi is forging commercial partnerships with the vibrant markets of Asia. Already, the Emirathis have brokered trade agreements with India and Indonesia, while Malaysian and Thai projects are emerging from the pipeline. But perhaps its crowning achievement is its entry into BRICS in 2024. This move not only cements the UAE alongside the rising powers of the global order, but also provides a medium for further commercial arrangements with some of the fastest growing economies. Still, in the Middle East, even an economy as strong as an oak still requires a shield of protection. To this end, the Emirates is taking on an active role in regional politics. This is not just a flex to invigorate its hard power, but a response to changing dynamics. The 9-11 attacks, which involved two Emirati hijackers, served as a turning point. Abu Dhabi recognized that regional inaction had made it vulnerable to foreign actors and Islamist groups. In response, the Emirathis shifted tactics and went on the offensive to crush political Islam both within its borders and across the wider Middle East. Abu Dhabi holds particular disdain for the Muslim Brotherhood, whom Emirati officials accuse of stoking the Arab Spring. Wherever the Muslim Brotherhood springs up, the iron fist of Abu Dhabi falls. 
Most notably, when Egypt freely elected a president with ties to the Brotherhood, the UAE sponsored the coup that ousted him from power. But this hardline policy goes beyond just defense, and it has not been without its opposition. The Emirates is at odds with Qatar, which pursues the opposite policy and actively supports political Islam. The 2017 Qatar blockade, imposed by Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain and Egypt, aimed to recalibrate Qatar's regional alignment, but ultimately failed, leaving Qatar as a non-aligned entity amid escalating Middle Eastern tensions. But to ascend the global order, one must run with the big dogs, and when it comes to the major powers, the Emirathis play all sides. Balancing regional security needs with global partnerships, the UAE strengthened its ties with all the major powers. The UAE maintains robust economic, technological and security connections with China. At the same time, Abu Dhabi views stronger ties with Washington as an antidote to regional political instability. To gain favor, the Emirates actively supports American initiatives ranging from Afghanistan to the Libyan intervention. This positions Abu Dhabi as a steadfast ally in regional affairs. In return, the UAE looks for bilateral security with the US and this has worked to some extent. In 2017, the two states signed the US-UAE defense agreement, codifying previous agreements and paving the way for future cooperation. Since signing, the US has offered arms sales, including a $23 billion deal in 2020 comprised of drones and F-35 jets. But while the agreement positioned Abu Dhabi closer to Washington, the relationship remains teetering on the rocks. Three years on, the 50 F-35s, 18 MQ-9 Reaper drones and an assortment of advanced munitions remain firmly on US soil. Joe Biden's ascension to the presidency was accompanied by a more cautious approach towards the UAE. Biden worries that the UAE's strong economic and security relationship with China could lead to crucial military technology falling into Chinese hands. Nevertheless, Abu Dhabi remains determined to pursue security agreements with Washington. Strong ties with America mean arms and security deals. In turn, arms and security deals mean an upper hand against the UAE's primary threat, Iran. Abu Dhabi regards Iran as an unpredictable and destabilizing force. Tehran's network of proxies, stretching from Hezbollah to the Houthis, align with the very forces the Emirates opposes. This geopolitical backdrop set the scene for the UAE's 2015 Yemen intervention. As part of an Arab coalition, Abu Dhabi moved to eradicate the Iran-backed Houthi rebels. Yet the Emirates shot itself in the foot. By backing a separatist group over the Saudi-backed government, they split the alliance in two and relieved pressure on the Houthis. So much so that in 2022, the UAE had to scale back its involvement, realizing that it only served to aid the Iranian proxy. Yet, in the truest pragmatic sense, despite the bilateral tensions, the UAE maintains trade and diplomatic relations with Iran, constituting a strategic hedge more than a steadfast friendship. Luckily for the Emirates in the sea of Iranian concerns, it does not sail alone. Regional counterparts, including Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and Israel, all share collective apprehension over Iran's adventurous posturing and nuclear ambitions. Since America is not seen as a reliable bulwark for containment, the regional powers find it increasingly crucial to forge localized alliances instead. Consequently, the Abraham Accords of 2020 stood out as a rare oasis. For the first time, the Accords forged normalized relations between the Emirates, Bahrain and Israel. This not only places the UAE at the forefront of Middle Eastern geopolitics, but also paves the way for enhanced security cooperation against Iran. Here, the distinct advantages of Emirati statecraft shine through. 
emphasizing real politic permits the formation of pragmatic alliances unconstrained by historical grievances. Yet, the simmering Gaza conflict looms as a potential spoiler in this newfound unity. While the Emirates has not withdrawn its ambassador like many other Arab states, the Israeli vision for post-war Gaza may prove problematic. Although murky, Tel Aviv could be leaning towards the West Bank model, with designated authorities handling civic affairs while Israel maintains security control. The Emirati leadership, however, while firmly opposing Hamas, prefers a two-state solution and envisions Mohammed Dalin a former Palestinian representative at the helm in Gaza. This stance reflects a broader sentiment among Arab states that have normalized ties with Israel. And however this plays out, Israel's number one guarantee for long-term security lies in normalizing its relationship with the wider Arab world. Reaching out to new allies has become increasingly more important since rifts have emerged with neighboring Saudi Arabia. Competition between the Saudis and Emiratis highlights a quest for dominance in key sectors like tourism, trade, and even space exploration. While this represents economic rivalry rather than diplomatic estrangement, vigilance is crucial. As in geopolitics, it only takes a few missteps for your dearest friend to become your bitterest enemy. Gazing up at the major global powers, when you try to please everyone, you risk alienating all. President MBZ's ultimate aim is for a NATO-style security arrangement with Washington, but his strong affiliations with China undoubtedly complicate matters. Washington finds Beijing's investments in ports and the 5G network especially troubling. The two sides remain uncompromising. And it may be that MBZ is waiting for the 2024 US elections before taking decisive action. Should MBZ seek deeper cooperation with the United States, it would necessitate a substantial reduction in its ties with China. However, this poses a gamble. Closely aligning with Washington would require solid US commitments to Emirati interests. Without those assurances, allying with America could backfire and disarm Abu Dhabi of its prized diplomatic arsenal. The UAE's swinging association between the US and China may even compel these superpowers to look for more reliable allies. With countries like Saudi Arabia and Qatar available, there's no shortage of viable alternatives. What's more, Abu Dhabi's newfound assertive attitude means it has thrown its hat into the Middle East's ring. No longer a bystander, it will face the direct consequences of its regional involvement. With each diplomatic pivot and internal challenge, the Emirates walks the line between a rising power and a ticking time bomb. Yet, from the arid desert dunes to the sprawling metropolises, the UAE has crafted a story of resilience and innovation. It has not only secured a prominent position on the global stage, but has redefined the art of thriving in a volatile environment. In its success, the Emirates shows a readiness to engage indiscriminately, regardless of the character or principles of its partners. Politics, after all, has no relation to morals. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Thank you for watching and Sarol.